the outer parts of the galaxy were rotating fast enough that there must be a lot more mass, otherwise the galaxy would have flown apart. The only way to resolve this paradox of galaxies which spin ten times too fast is to assume that there is a halo, a halo of invisible matter surrounding the galaxy, keeping the galaxy whole. Dark matter was present in the galaxies, and it had enough mass to keep the rotation speed constant. Imagine that I am the dark matter. This ball is a star orbiting me because my gravitational force is keeping it in place. But even if you couldn't see me, you would know that there must be something here, otherwise the star would just zoom off in a straight line. There must be something causing that gravity, and that's how we know that there must be dark matter. Rubin estimated that there was ten times more dark matter than ordinary illuminated stuff. Since then, we've analyzed hundreds of galaxies and they all have the same pattern. They all rotate too fast for their own good and they need dark matter to hold them together. This time, science paid attention and started to wonder, what is dark matter? How do you find something that is invisible in space? They needed to see just where dark matter was hiding out in the universe. And even if they couldn't see it, science realized that dark matter exposed itself by bending light that passes through it. It's called gravitational lensing, and it's a virtual spotlight that uncovers any invisible stuff in the universe. What it does do is it does what all matter does, and that it can deflect the light ray. So a light ray can be deflected in its path by dark matter. By tracing the battered light's path, gravitational lensing detected dark matter concentrated in the halos of galaxies. Gravitational lensing proved to be infallible, and dark matter's presence was suddenly revealed. This technique of gravitational lensing is the most precise because we can actually pinpoint not just how much dark matter there is, but how it's distributed in its position on the sky. And that's uh, because we can measure the distortion of the light rays passing through the dark matter. How do you know that your glasses are there? Because it bends light. In the same way, by looking at Hubble space pictures of the universe, and looking at the distortion of light as it goes through galaxies, we actually have maps of dark matter. Most of the mass of a galaxy is from the dark matter. The ordinary matter accumulates in the gravitational field of the dark matter. But once dark matter came on the scene, scientists wondered if it was a new, undetected particle or just invisible, ordinary matter. When people found dark matter, everybody wanted to know, well, what is it, you know? And, of course, the first answer is it's just the stuff that makes up you and me, but it's not shining. Scientists started to investigate objects in the universe that didn't emit light. Black holes were considered. They don't emit light, can draw matter to themselves, and are detected with gravitational lensing. It could take the form of black holes or machos, massive compact halo objects, which are basically dark, small stars that don't give off a lot of light. Machos hide out in the halo of the Milky Way and are detected by gravitational lensing. But there weren't enough to account for the amount of dark matter needed. Failed stars like brown dwarfs were also suspected. They are massive enough to make up dark matter's presence. Whatever dark matter is, there is way more of it than the ordinary matter of stars and planets. Ten times more. All of the stuff that you can construct from ordinary atoms, protons and neutrons and electrons, cannot possibly be enough to account for the total amount of matter that you see in galaxies and clusters. Scientists continued to present new suspects as the search continued for dark matter. Previously discovered exotic particles like neutrinos were reconsidered. Like dark matter, neutrinos are passing through the Earth millions of particles at a time. But they are too light to account for dark matter's effect on gravity. And scientists can recreate neutrinos in particle colliders. They also come from the sun.
Axions is also another possible dark matter candidate. Uh, they were invented to explain a particular uh, glitch in one of the particle physics theories. They would be extremely light, so you search for them in a completely different way than what we're doing. But there would be, they would also be very numerous, and so they could possibly be the dark matter. Axions are very light and are believed to have been created at the moment of the Big Bang, just like dark matter. But theories suggest that they can change to protons, while dark matter is stable. After exhausting all the usual suspects, many scientists believe dark matter is a new exotic particle, unlike anything on Earth. And billions are passing through us every second. Up until the discovery of dark matter, scientists believed the universe was made only of protons, neutrons, and electrons. The stuff everything on Earth is made of. And we know it has some mass, uh, and we're left with something that we've not yet detected. But to be a perfect dark matter candidate, it must have certain physical properties. And none of the usual suspects were fitting the crime. So we know that the dark matter is some ponderous substance. We know that it's not moving too quickly, and we know that we can't see it. Dark matter particles are not traveling at the speed of light, and they don't interact um, with you and me or anything pretty well, and that's why it's been so difficult to, to uh, track down these particles. And it doesn't interact with ordinary matter except through gravity. If I had some dark matter in my hand, it would have weight. But first, it would dissolve right through my fingers. There aren't any candidates for cold dark matter within what we call the standard model of particle physics. Like an invisible man passing through walls, dark matter is passing through Earth billions of particles at a time, never colliding with ordinary matter. So the most popular idea for what the dark matter could be is something called a WIMP. WIMPs are weakly interacting massive particles. They have not been detected. But their characteristics match the perfect dark matter candidate. At the Sudan laboratory, the Fermilab team has gone underground, braving thousands of bats to try and capture a WIMP particle. This is called the Cryogenic Dark Matter Search, CDMS is the acronym for it. This was a, an iron ore mine uh, until 1962 when it shut down. Uh, we're half mile underground. Fermilab has designed a machine that at sub-zero temperatures can detect a dark matter particle passing through it. And its sensor is made of germanium, a dense metal jam-packed with atoms. It's a very pure block of germanium. It's got on the surface of it a pattern of tiny little thermometers, basically, that are able to detect when a particle passes through this hockey puck sized chunk of germanium dark matter is streaming right through us right now without doing anything very occasionally it will bump into the nucleus of an atom and that's the signature that we're hoping to see to get a clean dark matter hit Fermilab needed to filter out junk from space we would get so many particles that it would it would be really trying to sift a needle in a haystack Fermilab's experiment picks up all matter that passes through this detector. The less junk in the air, the easier it will be to detect a dark matter particle. 